Take two, power of the gospel. And five, four, three. So this word gospel, we know that it means good, good news. news. Good news. It's glad tidings. Yeah. And as Goodwin writes, Christ's riches are unsearchable, and this doctrine of the gospel is the field that these treasures of Christ are hidden in. Wow. It's such a precious reality. Jesus found in this wonderful message of the gospel. Hodge writes, the gospel is so simple that a small child can understand it. Yeah. And it is so profound that studies by the wisest, wisest theologians will never exhaust it. Do you find the gospel to be completely simple? It is, you know, when I was coming to the studio to talk with you, that is the exact phrase the Holy Spirit gave me. I can't believe you just read that. That it is, the gospel is the accumulative of the entire Old Testament that comes to the pinnacle that is Christ Jesus. <laughs> Everything, every foreshadow, every, the Bible says every tittle, every part of scripture was the accumulative of Christ Jesus. Yes. And yet the simplicity is that Christ died for us yeah. so that we might be children of God that we might know him, that we might know his presence in our lives. Mm -hmm. It is simple enough, as you've already quoted, that a child yes. can understand it. And yet it is so deep <laughs> that a theologian could spend a lifetime yes. and not even broach the first level yes. of his glory. That is the beauty of the gospel. And that is why the gospel is not just a carnal message. Mm -hmm. it, 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 requires the Holy Spirit to breathe upon mm -hmm. the preaching of the gospel yeah. because it is a revelation. Yes. We need the Holy Spirit in order to reveal Christ unto us. And that is the beauty of the gospel. That is, that, that's why the Bible says that the gospel is the power of God yes, that's where I was going unto next. salvation. Yeah. You know, I love when Paul said, he said, he said, I, I'm, I'm trying to quote the scripture and he said, how will they hear mm -hmm. without a preacher? Mm -hmm. the, the gospel was made to be declared, to be proclaimed. Yeah. That is why Reinhardt said, he said, that an unpreached gospel is no gospel yes. at all. That when it is heard in the ears of men, the Holy Spirit takes that word and makes Christ more real in your heart than the very air you breathe. That's beautiful. You, you quoted Romans 1, 16, yeah. where the scripture specifically says, that I am not ashamed of the gospel. The gospel, for it is. For it is the power of God for salvation to everyone yeah. who believes. It says here salvation. Now, salvation implies that danger. I mean, if, if I saved you from a bus hitting you, then what I saved you from was the destruction and damage yeah. of that bus hitting you. So what is it that he is, quote, saving us from? Well, scripture says that yet while we were sinners, Christ died for us. Yeah. You have to go back to the beginning in the fall in the garden where sin enters mm -hmm. into man. Yeah. And at that point, we need salvation. And that is why, you know, I always think of this is that the beauty of the gospel is this, is that Christ became our substitution. Yes. He came, think of this, God had to save us from something he was not. Mm -hmm. Yeah. You understand? He was not. He, he knew no sin. <laughs> he was not fallen. And yet, because of righteousness, he couldn't just say, well, we, we'll overlook that. We'll overlook the sin in, in humanity. Mm -hmm. No, he had to become our substitution. <laughs> he had to take on the form of man. Yeah. The Son of Man had to come. You know, think of this. God never knew tiredness. <laughs> he never knew weakness. <laughs> the Bible says that Jesus wept. A God of eternity came down that he may know our weakness. When you say to God, Lord, I'm tired, mm -hmm. Jesus knew exactly. Yes. He knows every, every weakness in our, in our lives. And because of that, the Bible says that he couldn't, he had to redeem us. He had to purchase us. Yeah. He had to take us out of that sin and bring us into righteousness. Yeah. And for that, he had to shed blood. Yeah. 
-hmm. because the Bible says that the life of man is in the blood. Mm -hmm. He had to shed blood. The Bible says that he became sin for us. Yeah. That is the substitution. Yeah. He took our sin. He took our nakedness. Mm -hmm. And through the cross of Calvary, when the blood was shed, you know, I love this. The enemy didn't realize the power of the blood. Yes. You see, the, Bible, the scripture says in Corinthians that if, if principalities and powers, in other words, if the devil would have known, he would have never crucified right. the king of glory. Mm -hmm. He didn't realize that in that blood was our redemption, that we would become new creations. The Bible says this, he says that we are born again. Well, what does that mean? It means by the spirit yes. we come out. You see, the Bible says that the wages of sin is death. Christ didn't just come and say, well, we'll overlook that. No, yeah. he purchased us. Yeah. He was our substitution. I say it like this. If we were in a court of law, uh -huh. we would be found guilty. Yes. The hammer would come down and say, you are guilty. But imagine this, just as the judge was about to pass the sentence, Christ said, no, I'll take that punishment. I'll take that shame. I'll take that guilt. Wow. I will purchase it through my blood. And that is why only Christ alone can receive the glory. Yes. That's why there is no other way to salvation. He is it. He is the accumulative yes. of all God's plan, yes. all God's purpose in creation. That's beautiful. You mentioned the blood. I wrote this quote down from D.L. Moody. The most solemn truth in the gospel is that the only thing Christ left down here is his blood. Wow, 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 <laughs> I thought wow, you'd wow. like that. Wow. But interesting, the, the substitution note, we were talking about 2 Corinthians 5, 20 through 21. He, he made him who knew no sin to be sin for us. Lucado, uh, Max Lucado, he said uh, that in Luke 24, verse 42, when they're looking at who to release or if Jesus is to be crucified, yeah. it says of Jesus, this man has done nothing wrong. Wow. And Lucado says, there it is. That's the key of the gospel. Yeah. I am wrong. He is right. I have failed. He did not. He, I deserve to die. He deserves to live. This is the essence of that substitution. As we talked about a minute ago, Spurgeon says, you stand before God as Christ because Christ stood before <laughs> God as you. Beautiful. It's just wonderful. Incredible. But don't you see that this substitution, everything you're talking about, is connected with love? Yeah. You know, there are many things we can say about God, so many facets of God. But one of the most powerful things that it says God is, He is love. Yeah. He is the definition of love. You know, many times I, I speak to a generation that they have a warped concept of <laughs> the purity of love. Yeah. The enemy, the devil, tries everything to corrupt yeah. and to, to cause our perception of love to be flawed in every way. And yet, when we look at Christ, He is love. Yeah. He's not even the definition of love. <laughs> he is love. Yeah. Everything. You know, the Bible says about the love of God, He said it's so high you can't get over it, so low you can't get under it, so wide you cannot get around it. The love of God. And that's what will soften the most hardest of hearts. Yeah. Is, you know, there's a song that a dear friend of mine wrote. It says, in royal robes, I don't deserve. I live to serve your majesty. Yes. He clothed us. You know, in the garden when Adam and Eve, when they fell, when they sinned, for the first time they saw their nakedness. Mm. And when God came, remember the Bible says that God walked with man. Yeah, yeah. Think of that. The, the, the beauty of creation, that God didn't just create robots. <laughs> he gave the free will that he may dwell with them, yes. that he may walk with them. That's what the enemy came to destroy. <laughs> and yet when Christ came, that love that was willing to lay down his own life, yeah. that that union, that, that that intimacy could be restored with his creation. That is the beauty. Mm -hmm. And that's why the blood, you know, in, you remember in, in the Old Testament when Cain killed Abel, uh -huh. and God comes and he says to Cain, the blood of your brother cries, cries out, out to me yeah. from the ground. Mm -hmm. There was something in the blood that Cain couldn't hear but God could. Mm. And you see, that's why the Bible speaks that we have a better covenant. <laughs> yeah. 
than that of Abel. We have a better covenant that the blood cries out, the blood of Christ cries out yeah. on behalf of us. Wow. You see, the blood had to be efficacious. Mm -hmm. It couldn't be, that's why the Bible says he, he died once for all. Yeah. You know, I'm saved, I love Jesus, but there may be times that I fall short. There may be times that I have a wrong thought, but that blood had yes. to be so powerful. <laughs> yes. That even, even in my salvation, mm -hmm. when I fall short, the blood still has the power yeah. to make me, to make you the righteousness of God. Yes, beautiful. This is the power of His blood. Yes. We have a better covenant. Yes, yes. And it's connected with love. Yeah. I remember Bunky said one time, God gave Himself for us yeah. so that He could give Himself to us. And I thought, I thought right there, that's the, wow. the key, like you were saying, the garden. But if you could look at Romans real fast, uh, 5, verse 6 through 11. Could you read verse 6 through 11 for us? And then just kind of any thoughts that you have from there. This is Romans chapter 5, verse 6. It says, For when we were still without strength, in due time Christ died for the ungodly. Mm -hmm. I just want to pick up on that yeah, for sure, a moment. sure. You know, many people say, I'm a good person. I'm, I live a good life. But they miss what the scripture is saying, that we were unable. We don't, our righteousness is like filthy rags. Yeah. We do not have the strength. <laughs> we do not have the ability. That's why when the law was given to man through Moses, the law, the Bible teaches us, is the schoolmaster. Yeah. It is a place that humanity can never get to. Yes, but true. Christ fulfilled the law yes. through his grace. The Bible says that he was full of grace and truth. He was the accumulative, yeah. that we don't have the strength to save ourselves. Mm -hmm. Then it goes on, for, scar for sca scarcely, for a righteous man will one die. Yet perhaps for a good man, someone would even dare to die. But God demonstrates his own love towards us in that while we were still sinners, Christ died for us. You know, before God spoke, let there be light, he'd already decreed <laughs> that Christ would die. You see, salvation was not a responsive plan. Come on. God didn't respond to the devil in the garden and think, I'll send my son. See, the Bible says that when the time had come, yeah. God sent forth his son. Yeah. He had spoken already from eternity mm -hmm. into time. He said, before he created man, I will send my son. Yes, God. That's why the plan of salvation is eternal. <laughs> it wasn't responsive, it was preemptive. Yes. God already knew that he would have to redeem us. Isn't that the purity That's of love? beautiful. That he still yeah. <laughs> made man, even though he knew it would cost him everything. Yes. Is that it, that's all of it? Through 11? You, no. Oh, no. People. Much more than having now been justified by his blood, we shall be saved from the wrath through him. Yes. For if when we were enemies, we were reconciled to God through the death of his son. Much more, having been reconciled, mm -hmm. having been reconciled, we shall be saved by his life. And not only that, but we also rejoice in God through our Lord Jesus Christ, through whom we have now received the reconciliation. Yes, that's so We have cute. been reconciled. Yes. That means the Bible says we can come boldly before the throne of grace the garden. with no shame, yeah. no guilt. That is, the garden has been restored yeah. again. He walks with us. You know, I was in an interview. Do I have time to tell sure, you? Sure, yeah. I was in an interview one time, and an interviewer said to me, would you like to have been alive when Jesus walked the earth? And the Holy Spirit spoke to me. And I said, no. <laughs> and I could see that the interview's next few questions, they were based upon you the precept yeah. that I said, oh, I would love to have walked mm -hmm. with Jesus. I said, you mistake what it means to walk with him. Jesus is no longer walking physically upon the earth. Yes but he walks with me yeah. every single day. He talks with me. He lives inside of me. I'm walking with him now yeah. in a greater way, can I say it, than even when Jesus walked upon yeah, the earth. I agree. Because now his spirit dwells within <laughs> us. We are the temple of God. Think about that. Yes. When we talk about reconciliation, yeah. can you imagine how the angels look down upon vessels made of clay? Mm -hmm. 
that through the blood, through the cross of Calvary, somehow, some way, the God of all creation, mm -hmm. where angels fear to tread, yeah. the Bible says that the cherubim cover themselves. Yeah. Think of the glory that shone on Moses' face, and yet we have a better covenant. God dwells in us. How is that possible? How? Only because when God looks at us, he doesn't just see us, he sees his son. Yes. The blood that was shed on Calvary, and that blood cries out, yeah. they are forgiven, they are reconciled, yes. they are one. The Bible says that he is the, he is the vine. Yeah. We, we are the branches of that vine. We have been grafted in. Yes. That means we are one with him. There is no greater message than this because there is no other religion that can declare that we are one with God. He is salvation. He is love. There is no other message. There is no other message that humanity has ever heard that truly says that we are one with him. I have traveled the world. I have seen people cut themselves, crawl on their knees until their knees bleed trying, being bathed in rivers, trying to attain some kind of, of forgiveness mm -hmm. from a God of wrath. Mm -hmm. But the gospel, yes. but the gospel says, <laughs> you did nothing, yes. I did everything. Praise God. I made a way where there was no way. I redeemed you. That is why to be saved is not just, well, I'll take the grace and live my life as I want to mm -hmm. live. You have been redeemed, purchased. Yes. Your life is no longer your own because the cross demands everything. Mm -hmm. It doesn't demand a little prayer at the front of a church. It demands your life mm -hmm. must be laid down, yeah. that he may take it up again, yeah. that he may come and breathe life where there was death, mm -hmm. forgiveness where there is sin righteousness where there is guilt and shame. Yes. We are clothed, the Bible says, in robes of righteousness. Yeah. And for those who say, well, what does it mean to be reconciled? It means when you stand before God, there is no nakedness. Yes. You are clothed in Him. Yes. You are His temple. <laughs> he made that yeah. possible <clears throat> through the blood of Jesus Christ. I remember Bunky said, um, in other religions, and people spread the table for their gods. But in Christianity or in Christ, he spreads the table for us. It's, it's so beautiful to realize that even though it requires our life, there's no better or greater or more joyful thing to do than to give your life. Because yeah. it's what it was made to, to be yeah. connected to. You're made to be one with God. Yeah. I, I was saying this morning when I was in prayer, I said, oh Lord, I will long for you to rule my life. I was made for you to rule my life. Wow. So when a person looks at it and says, well, well I give my life? I mean, that's, that's pretty, pretty, no, no, this is what you were made for, and you'll find there's no joy outside of it. And you know, the requirement <clears throat> of laying down your life, you will never know the power of this gospel yeah. until that transaction takes place in your heart, yeah. until you truly surrender. You see, that's why religion will never satisfy you. Yeah. Because you can try, like those in the Old Testament, yes. to obey laws and regulation. <laughs> but only the power of the gospel, when you lay down your life, that's when grace and truth yes. becomes manifest in you. That's, so that's faith, isn't it? Yes. Real faith. Because we realize that we will never reach the mark. It doesn't matter how good I think I am. <laughs> right. You right. understand? Mm -hmm. You know, that's why the Old Testament is not irrelevant <laughs> because when you understand the Old Testament you will understand why Christ had to die yes why he had to become grace yeah. itself that yeah. we can come before the throne of grace without trying to reach the mark he is our mark yes he is our ceiling yeah. he's everything because he is one with us yeah he lives in us yeah. he breathes through us and that is why, you know, it took me a long time to come to that place in Christ where, you know, 
I wasn't trying to attain the mark. Mm -hmm. You understand? Yeah. When you try that, you actually step out of faith. Yes, and grace. Yeah, and you, you start to walk in your own strength and that's when the enemy will begin to try and bind your mm -hmm. life again. We must stay, and this is going back to the very beginning, yeah. the simplicity of the gospel yes. is that while we were yet sinners, Christ, Christ died, died. Okay. period, end of story, so good. that we might be reconciled. Yes. He, he, what does the scripture say? Um, all of us, like sheep, have gone astray. We've gone our own way. Yeah. He just showed us that to go away or your own way is to go astray. So people are like, well, I haven't done anything wrong. Well, if he's not the ruler of your life, that in and of itself is a definition of sin. Yeah. Independence is the, well, I don't, I'm not a homosexual. I don't drink. I don't do all these things. That's not the issue. No. Jesus didn't come to make bad men into good men. He came to make dead men live. Yeah. And that's the reality of laying down your way, your yeah. king. The only way for his life to enter in, as you're saying, is to lay our life at his that feet. That is the only transaction. Yeah. So, so in 1 John chapter 4, verse 9 and 10, uh, look at this verse and then take it home from there. 9 and 10, 1 John 4. You want to 10. go there? Yeah. If you could just read that and then just kind of give people an opportunity. Tell me again. If they're watching, 1 John 4, 9 and 10. And then you can use that as a platform to invite someone to the feet of Jesus. In this, the love of God was manifested towards us, that God has sent his only begotten son into the world, <laughs> that we might live through him. That's back to what we were saying, through him. In this is love, not that we love God, but that he loved us and sent his son to be the propitiation for our sins. Yes. Beloved, if God loved us, we also ought to love one another. Wow. You may be watching this and you may have realized in your heart that you need salvation. Can I tell you, making the decision to follow Christ is the greatest privilege any man, woman, and child could ever make. That God loved you. Yes. Even while you didn't even know him, the Bible says he first loved you. The Bible says that he knew you even before you were in your mother's womb. That means he'd already spoken your life into being. He already knew and had a plan for your life. I look across a generation that is searching for their identity, searching for purpose, trying to find it in this world. I lived in that world. I was a young man that rebelled against everything. I had bondage and addiction in my life, but Christ found me. He reached down, and when I yielded my life, everything changed. Mm -hmm. I encountered the presence of God that is now more real in my heart than the air, the oxygen that I breathe. And that is why I said, God, whatever you want to do in my life, my life is yours. It's yours. That's why when I lay my head down on an evening and I go to sleep, there's no fear in my life. There's no fear in my heart. Because I know yes. that my salvation my destiny, my future, my peace, my joy, my family are in his hands. He died for me and he died for you that you may know him. Mm -hmm. And the Bible says, and the power of his resurrection, that where there is death, when that transaction takes place, when you lay down your life, the Bible says, he takes up your life. He breathes his life into you. And the Bible says you receive an inheritance. What is that inheritance? That we are saved. Saved from a sin that you cannot control and you cannot quench. That sin is your master until Christ comes and dwells in your heart. Yes. Then the power of sin, the wages of sin are broken. They are canceled. Yeah. The debt has been paid. And now the Bible says, you are the righteousness of God. Yes, Lord. You will know the peace that surpasses all understanding. He'll heal your brokenness. Yes. 
He'll heal your pain. He takes away the shame and the guilt and the insecurities. Yes, thank you, Lord. He causes your weakness to become his strength. He shows himself through you that you might become a witness, <laughs> that you might proclaim this gospel. The gospel that says we don't deserve. <laughs> we did nothing to deserve yes. that he would die. You know, you may see some images of a Christ on a cross with a few trickles of blood. No, the brutality of the cross is that he was unrecognizable. Yeah. That he was beaten. The Bible says beyond that of any man. Mm -hmm. That by his stripes, his back was like a plowed field. Why? So that we might be healed. That is the power of a gospel that must be preached. That must be declared to every man, every woman. That there is healing yes. in his name. Yes. In the name of Jesus Christ alone. There is no other name given under heaven by which men can be saved. For there was no other God, no other Christ that could come and pay the price. God didn't send an angel. An angel couldn't complete this. Couldn't accomplish what Christ accomplished. Yes, thank you. He that knew no sin became our substitution. How can you not give your life <laughs> to such a savior? How can you not say, God, you first loved me. The only thing I can give you is my all. There were bondages in my life that I couldn't break. Chains that had bound me for so many years that I was unable to find the key. I wasn't even thinking about being saved. I wasn't even thinking about laying my life down. But it was a suddenly of God in my life, just like those that are watching this right now. There's a suddenly taking place in your heart. That's why you feel the way you feel right now. That is the conviction of the Holy Spirit, letting you know that you need a savior. Yes. I remember the presence of God came in that room. I wasn't in a church, I fell on the floor. I trembled in the presence of God and God spoke these words to me. He said, son, today is your day, choose. I had to make a decision. That is why the gospel is an ultimatum. Yes. It says it doesn't promise you tomorrow. It only promises you now, <laughs> choose this day whom you will serve. That is why right now I wanna give you that opportunity to know the love of God that surpasses all understanding. For a moment, I want you to see your savior. I want you to see the nails in his hands and the nails in his feet. And I want you to know that he would have done it just for you. For one that was lost, Christ would have died. Not only for the whole world did he die, he died for you, that you may know him. Yes. And because of that, all he asks is that you let him in. Open the door of your heart and say, yes, Lord, I receive your grace, I receive your mercy. I make you Lord of my life. Mm -hmm. Right now, if you want to make that decision, I want you to pray this prayer after me. Yeah. I want you to say, Lord Jesus, Lord Jesus, come into my heart. Wash me, cleanse me with your precious blood. Lord, forgive me of the sin that is in my life. And I lay my life down that you may take it up again. Holy Spirit, come and live inside of me. Reveal your word. Let it become alive, living, breathing inside of me. Jesus, today, be my Lord and Savior. Use my life. Let your will come to pass in me.
today I turn away from this world and I receive your grace. Holy Spirit, fill me, baptize me, anoint my life that from this day I will never be the same again. If you prayed that prayer, I want you to know this. The Bible says that you are born again. It's time to follow him, become his disciple. Read your Bible, pray, be planted in a church. Become a living, breathing stone. Become a witness. And I promise you this, it will be the greatest adventure, the greatest journey yes. you will ever, ever know. It's the beauty that Christ is our hope. He is our anchor. He is our source. Amen. Well, hallelujah. I feel like preaching right now. <laughs> you do. Fantastic. <laughs> Praise God. That's great, man. Thank you so much. For Glory be to God.